All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, and I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who I learned this truth from, and I'd like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. You know, and today I want to go into this article you know, from the LBC, and it says Russia threatens nuclear war if Ukraine counteroffensive pushes Kremlin forces out of the country. So, no, I'm just going to go into this article and bring out a few scriptures. So, Lord willing, this lesson is at a fine, straight to the point. So, as we know, you know, Ukraine and Russia have been at war since, I think, January or February of last year, you know. But pretty much, this is going to build up to World War Three, you know. So, I'm going to play this audio from this article. Then I'm going to bring out scriptures. Russia threatens nuclear war if Ukrainian counteroffensive pushes Kremlin forces out of the country. A top Russian politician has threatened nuclear war if Ukraine's counteroffensive is successful. Former president and key Putin ally Dmitry Medvedev said that Russia would be left with no other option but to launch nuclear missiles if Ukraine succeeds in tearing away land occupied by the Kremlin. Russia has annexed Crimea and four provinces of eastern Ukraine, although Kiev has succeeded in taking parts of some of these regions back. Ukraine is currently in a counteroffensive to try to push demoralized Russian forces out of its country, although progress is slow. Russia has claimed that the counteroffensive is failing, while Ukraine says it is simply being careful and remains committed to drive the Russian invaders beyond its borders. Read more. Putin's war hits home. Zelensky vows war is coming to Russia after Moscow is rocked by triple drone strike. Read more. President Zelensky changes law so Ukraine celebrates Christmas on different day to Russia. Mr. Medvedev, who was Russia's president from 2008 to 2012 and has also been prime minister, said Russia would be legally entitled to launch nuclear weapons if Ukraine took back the parts of the country that the Kremlin considers Russian. Our armed forces, reflecting the counteroffensive of our collective enemy, defend the citizens of Russia and of the world, Mr. Medvedev, the deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council, said on Telegram. That is obvious to all normal people. But as well as that, they are preventing global conflict. After all, if you imagine that the Ukrainian counteroffensive with the support of NATO is successful and they succeed in tearing away a part of our country, then we would be within our rights to use nuclear weapons, according to the decree of the president from June 2, 2020. There will simply be no other outcome. He added. So our enemies should pray for our warriors' success. They are making sure that a global nuclear fire is not ignited. Russian aggression has gone bankrupt on the battlefield. Today is already the 522nd day of the so-called special military operation, which the Russian leadership expected to last for a week or two. Ukraine is getting stronger. Gradually, the war is pic.twitter.com forward slash 4jqczc3ufy. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that Russia was struggling and Ukraine was getting stronger during the counteroffensive. But he warned that Russia could still launch terror attacks on critical infrastructure. Russian aggression has gone bankrupt on the battlefield. Today is already the 522nd day of the so-called special military operation, which the Russian leadership expected to last for a week or two. Ukraine is getting stronger. Gradually, the war is returning to Russia's territory, to its symbolic centers and military bases, and this is an inevitable natural and fair process. But we must be aware that, just like last year, Russian terrorists can still attack our energy sector and critical facilities this winter. Today we discussed with the communities the current state of preparation for all possible scenarios. Yeah, as you can see, you know, they're still at war. Russia's pretty much ready to push the button. You know, but the ultimate war is going to be between Russia and America. You know, prophecy still has to play out. You know, those are going to be the two main nations that are going to be 
at odds with each other during this third world war. You know, and these are just some of the pictures from, you know, the damage that was done. So, we're going to go into the scriptures. We're going to start in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. We're going to start in verse 1, and it says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord Power, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. I will turn thee back, and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company of bucklers, it's like even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togarma of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee, be thou prepared, and prepare thyself, Slakia, be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company, that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them, and yes, this is pretty much going into, you know, Russia, pretty much getting that old USSR spirit back, you know, the Lord is stirring, you know, pretty much stirring the Russians up, you know, to prepare for war. And then the comp it's like the nations or countries that were named, you know, pretty much these are, you know, Russia's allies, you know, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, you know, all of the UAE, you know, and, you know, China, North Korea, you know, Russia's going to ultimately be a guard unto these weak nations, you know, because Russia's again and they're going to lead they're going to be the main opponent against america during this war you know because ultimately all of these nations even america's allies you know they're all going to turn on her you know <clears throat> and they're all going to shoot their missiles so i want to go to the book of ezekiel chapter not ezekiel slakia isaiah 54 and 16 Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals and the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. And yes, that's going into those nuclear missiles, and that's what Russia is ready to do. They're ready to push the button. They're ready to send missiles over here. But again, prophecy has to play out, you know. And I'm going to go to the book of... Revelation chapter 20 and verse 8 and it says and I'm going to start at verse 7 and it says and when the thousand years are expired Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog together it's like it to gather them to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea and yes you know satan is talking about you no know, esau edom because he was in bondage for a thousand years you know after the roman empire fell you know they were in subjection you know to the nation of israel but ultimately you know they came back during the renaissance period you know and pretty much rebuilt you know modern day Rome which is America aka Babylon the Great but again you know they're going to be at war with Russia
This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49 and 20. It's lucky. Jeremiah 49 and 20, it says, Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Edom and his purposes that he hath proposed or it's lucky that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. And again, you know, that's going into America, you know, going, you know, America's going to be made desolate. But, you know, it says the least of the flock. So, you know, something is going to happen to where, you know, one of these smaller nations you know are going to ultimately end up starting world war three you know it may be with you know the nation not you know israelites but you know the nation or the i'll just say the land of israel you know it may have something to do with them you know or it may happen another way but ultimately you know one of these lesser nations are going to pretty much stir up Russia and America to ultimately kick off World War Three, you know? And again, America is going to be made desolate by these missiles. And we're going to go to the book of Job, chapter 20. In verse 22, and it says, In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly, Yahweh shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. He shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bow of steel shall strike him through. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. And yes, you know, that's going into those missiles. Because again, ultimately Esau, Edom, he wants to fulfill, you know, his new world order. But the Lord is only going to let him get so far before ultimately, you know, he overthrows him. You know, because that's what's going to happen. You know, he's going to be overthrown. But the nation that's going to do it is going to be Russia. You know, of course, the other nations are going to shoot their missiles over here as well. But <clears throat> ultimately, it's going to be Russia. They're going to be the main nation to come up against America. You know, and we're going to go to the book of Revelation chapter 17. I'm going to start at verse 14, and it says victory for the Lamb, because simultaneously while World War Three is happening, you know, our Lord Yahweh Shai is going to return and also make war as well. So this is Revelation 17 and 14, and it says, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they that are with him are called chosen and faithful. It's talking about the elect. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest were, it's like it, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. You know, the different nations that are over here in America. Verse 16, And then, it's like it, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and she'll eat her flesh and burn her with fire. And yes, you know, it's going into America's allies, you know, ultimately, <clears throat> you know, those 10 nations, you know, because that's the 10 horns are, you know, 10 nations, they're ultimately going to come up against America, you know, they're going to be angry, you know, and they're going to shoot their missiles over here as well. So... I'm going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 18. And 
And I'm just going to start at verse 1. On the headline reads, Babylon has fallen. This is Revelation 18 and 1. And it says, After these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Because again, once America is destroyed, it's going to be left completely desolate. You know, desert creatures are going to dwell here. You know, going back to Isaiah 34, verse 3. It says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And yes, you know, these other countries, you know, they are, or they have gotten rich, you know, from America because America is the biggest consumer nation in the world, you know, just one of the main countries that has gotten rich, you know, off of, you know, consumerism is China, you know. China's became a rich nation from America, you know. Just one of many. Because again, America imports a lot of things, you know. A lot of things aren't really produced in America anymore, you know, which is why we pretty much get things from other countries, you know. So it's verse 4, and it says, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Now, yes, you know, ultimately, you know, we're supposed to come out of this world, you know, and not be partakers of this world, because again, we know that Esau Edom only has a short time left to rule, but ultimately, you know, that's going to the elect, you know, they're going to be delivered. Verse 5. For his sins have reached unto heaven, and Yahweh hath remembered her iniquities, reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, and the cup <coughs> which she hath filled to, it's like you, and the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much hath she, it's like you. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit as it's like you, I sit a queen and am no widow, shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord Yahweh who judgeth her. And yes, you know, <clears throat> it's only going to take, you know, one day, you know, one hour for America to be completely destroyed. You know, these other nations, they're going to be angry because they have waxed rich. It's like they have waxed rich, you know, through America because pretty much America has lived deliciously. You know, this country has pretty much, you know, you know, in those glory days, you know, the so-called fabulous 50s, you know, it was pretty much the best time for Americans or, you know, the Edomites. But ultimately, you know, Babylon is being thrown down, you know. <clears throat> and it says, you know, lament for Babylon. So, you know, these other nations, they're going to mourn. It's Revelation 18 and 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall be with her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city Babylon that mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come and yes these other nations are going to mourn because they aren't going to be able to you know make any more money you know from America you know those ship masters they're going to see you know the smoke of her burning pretty much you know, this destruction is going to be so devastating. They're going to see the smoke, you know, from around the world, you know. But again, these nations, they're going to mourn because they won't be able to make any money. But as it says, it's only going to take one hour, you know. It's only going to take the Lord one hour to completely 
destroy America, you know, because as I say, our sins have reached unto heaven, you know. And then I'm going to close out with this. Is the book of Psalms, chapter 137, and verse 8. And it says, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. And yes, you know, as we know, America is spiritually Sodom and Egypt, you know. Pretty much, again, we know why it's called Sodom. You know, because of, you know, the alphabet people. You know that pushed their agenda but ultimately you know Egypt because you know this is where you know the Israelites you know so-called Negroes Latinos and Native Americans were made you know to serve hardcore bondage you know yet again but this is going to be the last captivity but again this is <coughs> excuse me Slakia. you know this is the harshest captivity that we are pretty much made to serve so, you know, we're going to be happy once America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, receives her judgment, you know. So that's pretty much it, you know. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory due to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who I learned this truth from, and i like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. Till next time I say Shalom.